Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, Intel has published a paper describing a new version of the x86 uh, instruction set architecture called x86S, where the S stands for simplified, where it wants to get rid of all the legacy stuff. 16-bit mode, 32-bit mode, just stick to 64-bit mode, only long mode, as it's called. So, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. First of all, I'd like to thank Blinkist for sponsoring this video. Now, when Intel released the 8086 in 1978, it was a 16-bit processor, and it booted up into what we now call real mode, in the sense that when it boots up, every single address is a real, actual address somewhere in physical uh, memory, up to one megabyte of memory. And then when it released the 286, it added a 16-bit protected mode, which was the first kind of ways in that you could have a kind of virtual memory, but it was still 16-bit. This was finalized and really set the stage in the 80386, where we had 32-bit protected mode, and uh, you're able to do full uh, virtual memory uh, multitasking. Now, if you're interested in how virtual memory works, what that means, an MMU, page tables, that kind of thing, I do have a video about that here on this channel, and you'll find the link in the description below. So 1978 with the 8086, 1982 we had the 286, 1985 we had the 386. Now, the 286 and the 386 both booted up in exactly the same way as the 8086 to preserve compatibility. So the 386, when it boots up, it still boots up in this real mode and then what it needs to do is switch into the 32-bit protected mode and then it can start doing the 32-bit uh, memory management stuff and then in the year 2000 AMD announced uh, x86 64 or AMD 64 so a 64-bit version of the x86 architecture and guess what it still boots up in real mode from 1978 so well even now if you have a really mega fast uh, uh, kind of uh, Intel chip, an i7, i9, or a top-end Ryzen chip, doesn't matter what it is, it still boots up like a chip from 1978, boots up into real mode. Then it needs to switch into 32-bit protected mode, and then from there, probably into 64-bit long mode. Now, long mode that introduced in AMD 64 introduced two new modes of operation, a 64-bit mode and a compatibility mode, along with four-level paging mode. Now, compatibility mode, a sub-mode of long mode, allows system software to implement binary compatibility with existing 16-bit and 32-bit x86 applications. It allows these applications to run without recompilation in long mode. And then, of course, in 2004, Intel also jumped onto the 64-bit x86 uh, bandwagon. So here is a table of the kind of the current modes supported by modern day x86 processors. You've got this legacy mode which has protected mode. There's also a mode I didn't talk about called virtual x86 mode. There's real mode that it boots up into when it first powers on. Then in long mode you've got the 64-bit mode as I just said and the compatibility mode. And what Intel basically wants to do is get rid of all that lower stuff. Get rid of that legacy mode stuff. Just boot up straight into 64 4-bit mode and that of course in itself has a compatibility mode for running 32-bit applications. So Blinkist is a service where they take non-fiction bestsellers and they distill it down into the key ideas. And it's perfect for curious people who love to learn and busy people who don't have time to read. The bite-sized chunks which cover the most important things are called Blinks. And using those Blinks, you can get the key ideas from non-fiction bestsellers in minutes, not in hours. They also have a new feature called Blinkist Spaces that allows you to create a space with friends or family where you can recommend titles to each other. All members of the shared spaces can access all the titles in the space with or without a Blinkist premium subscription. Now with Blinkist, you can feed your brain while driving, commuting, working out, walking, or relaxing and here you can see a screenshot of what it looks like on an actual device you can listen to an audiobook version or you can read the text getting the same key information in just a few minutes rather than in hours so the last thing i listened to on blinkist was deep thinking by gary kasparov of course the well-known chess master looking at the differences between human creativity and artificial intelligence and of course as always with blinkist i was able to take all that information in a much much shorter time i didn't actually have to go and read that whole book but i was able to boost my uh, understanding of these which are really quite complicated topics and that was a great way a great way to get into that topic 
You can get 25% off a Blinkist annual subscription. Start your seven day free trial by clicking in the link in the description below. And so Intel has published a white paper describing the impact of booting straight into long mode on a processor, including, you know, control registers and paging tables and all the stuff that gets down to the real nitty gritty of how a processor works. But here is a kind of a general overview of what it means to have a 64-bit only processor. So of course, one thing is you need to be able to boot directly into a 64-bit state when the processor is uh, reset. Uh, and there are some special stuff they talk about there. And also they do mention now this five level paging table. Now at the moment, if you want to switch the level of paging tables that you use, you need to drop back into an unpaged legacy mode and then switch back into the page mode. In x86s, it's possible to switch to a five level paging without leaving long mode. So x86s ISA compatibility is marked by a single CPU ID feature bit called Legacy Reduced OS ISA. So it's possible to detect that this is the type of CPU that have. The CPU will always be in long mode. 32-bit protected mode is no longer supported and can't be entered. The 32-bit sub mode of Intel 64, AMD 64 still exists, so you can run 32-bit applications. 16-bit real and protected modes are removed, and 16-bit addressing is removed. So where are we in 64-bit today? Well, 64-bit operators really are the de facto standard nowadays. You can't get a 64-bit version of Windows 11, for example. Uh, some of the firmware that uh, Intel ships with its motherboards don't recognize 32-bit uh, operating systems. So we really are already in the 64-bit uh, era. And of course, Linux still supports 32-bit operating systems for older hardware. And in fact, it's really even up till today, even processors are released today, there are no x86s processors yet. So this is not as if this is going to drastically impact us today, but in the future, a new processor may come out, which is a 64-bit only processor, and you'll need to have the right uh, operating system to go with it. If you've got older hardware, including hardware, what day if you wanted to, you can run a 32-bit version uh, of Linux on it. That's not going away anytime soon. Now, in the context of what's going on in processors in general, it's worth mentioning that ARM have also made this transition to 64 bits. So the first 64 bit ARM cores, which were the Cortex A53 and A57 were announced in 2012. The first 64 bit version of Android was released in 2014. The Pixel 7 was the first 64 bit only Android device. And the MediaTek Dimensity 9200 is a 64 bit only ARM V9.0 processor. And if you've watched my recent videos, you'll see that the Cortex X4, the Cortex A720, the Cortex A520 are 64 bit only ARM V9.2 cores. Now, I do have a video here on this channel called 32 Bits is Dead. And in that one, I talk about the context of ARM moving over to 64 bits. So in that sense, the whole industry is moving in that direction. Intel are trying now to get rid of the legacy stuff so that they can move into that 64 bit only direction as well. Now, if you want to read Intel's white paper, it's called x86, an external architectural specification. The easiest thing to do is Google envisioning a simplified Intel architecture, and it's sure to be the first couple of links there, and you'll be able to go and read their blog post and get access to that white paper. Okay, that's it. So x86s for simplified. Love to hear what you think about it. Do tell me in the comments below. I'd like to thank Blinkist for sponsoring this video. If you like these kind of videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.